the year 2025 is so the more interesting year and i think a year where probably a hard adoption curve will follow if you look at the bitcoin curve and you ignore the volatility then we are in a super cycle since bitcoin is created i don't think that planned economy will work in any case not even in computer games so it will work never right i think bitcoin will win in the end socialism systems attack the anarchy systems and anarchy systems are so small that they can't defend so when anarchy has to work or, or should work then it has to be a global phenomenon and which thing should uh, bring us a global anarchy system there's nothing besides bitcoin bitcoin is a peaceful solution for a free better world in the end open source will win because it's more efficient mainstream media will switch to nostra in the end not today probably not in the next 10 years but maybe in the next 20 years I'm really looking forward to it because you are in the German speaking area, the top guy for me. Like if, if anyone asks me, oh, do you have uh, Bitcoin content in German? I always like block trainer. Uh, it's uh, your channel. Uh, like that's, that's the go-to guy for me um, to, to go to Bitcoin content. Uh, and I think a lot of people, even I, I think I mentioned you at least like 10 times already in a podcast when people ask me about German content creators that come from America. So I'm really excited to, to be here with you and, and talk Bitcoin about uh, with you. So the first question for me is just to like start off with current things. Uh, what were your some of your biggest highlights this year? Uh, we had a lot in there with, with like the, the halving, all them high before halving, ETFs, uh, President Trump is speaking. What were some of your biggest highlights in, in 2024 and, and how impactful were they? Yeah, I think it's uh, probably two things um, for sure. The first thing are the ETFs because this is the gateway for the big money. So this is the first time uh, where companies can regulate it by Bitcoin easily, because before you had you have to do so much to buy Bitcoin as a company, especially as a as a tra public traded company. And uh, since the ETFs are there, it's just um, yeah, take your portfolio um, or your your uh, your app uh, where you're buying uh, stocks and so on and buy Bitcoin like over the ETFs for sure. And it's not like uh, that I'm uh, afraid of BlackRock or so on because I think Bitcoin is for everyone, so for the Wall Street as well. And I think the solution Bitcoin brings for us is not on, yeah, the Wall Street is now out of the game. It's more like uh, Bitcoin is a very fair money, a very fair asset. And um, so all lies and, and all, all uh, so when they try to, corrupt the system they can't do this with bitcoin so bitcoin is a long-term solution not a short-term solution in my opinion now i think um so the etfs are at the end very good for bitcoin um because yeah a, a very big part of the society can now invest in bitcoin uh, and before it was not possible and i also don't think that's very dangerous because uh yeah Probably a lot of Bitcoin will uh, accumulate by the by the ETFs, but I don't think that will be the biggest part of all Bitcoin circulating. So the ETFs will get the most expensive Bitcoin, but not <laughs> not on the on the number like like on the count. So it's uh, they get expensive Bitcoin, but not uh, the biggest um, stash like this. Uh, so, and the next thing is, uh, yeah, the presidential election thing with Donald Trump, with uh, RFK and Cynthia Lamas and uh, all the politicians, because the same thing, I don't think Bitcoin need these guys, but they need Bitcoin and they prove it now. And even if Trump is not elected and even if he don't hold his word and, and he was it was just a lie to get more more voters and so on I, what i don't think so probably it, he will not bring bitcoin that deep in the in the us government as he probably tells but there are some parts which i think are very hard proven uh for example in the republican um election paper uh 
there are some words, uh, very misunderstanding words, like um, we are against CBDC and uh, we are for Bitcoin and we don't want KYC for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So and you, you can't say, ah, oh, probably it's, it's so squishy written that you in the end could pr probably uh, switch it in the opposite thing or so on. So this is, uh, these are some words which are very hard <laughs> coded. Like uh, I don't think uh, there will come something different as this. So I think that Bitcoin is discussed at this level is good for Bitcoin because this is an idea like an root in the in the minds of so much people now which are probably never saw bitcoin before at this level to probably um yeah, have a solution for the for the debt problem of the us state and so on and uh yesterday or the day before yesterday there was an article from the financial times the british media um which said, oh, this would be a very bad idea to have Bitcoin as a global reserve, especially in a time where the dollar is uh, more and more losing on trust um, from other countries. And if uh, Donald Trump is now building a Bitcoin reserve, this will be a bad sign for the dollar because why should one country on the world now uh, decide for the dollar when they also can decide for Bitcoin? But in the end, he also this article also said, yeah, um, we need something different. We need uh, uh, a very good, um, uh, very good, uh, yeah, very good decisions. What the state should do with money. He needs to be more careful. He should do less debt. And in the end, you think, yeah, that's the solution Bitcoin brings, right? <laughs> so uh, you see, there is an article. It's against Bitcoin, but the idea of bringing Bitcoin. To the US, uh, to the US government is now discussed. And this is a way how Bitcoin is getting improved by good and bad words, by uh, good and bad um, things that happen. And there's a meme which just asks, but is it good for Bitcoin? And it's always yes, right? So yeah, I think these two things, the ETFs and the presidential election and Bitcoin as a topic are the biggest things uh, which happened for mainstream mass adoption. But in the end, even if this don't happen, Bitcoin don't need this. It's more like you see now they need Bitcoin and they want Bitcoin. Interesting. It, it, could that be the, 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 the start of this whole nation state game theory that uh, it's like El Salvador was kind of the start, but I feel like El Salvador is a very small country that it's like, yeah, they are, they are doing it, but they don't make a big impact. But when you, the, the U.S. is starting, when the Brits talks about that, when other countries are talking about that, just the, I think just the possibility that some country is, is doing that, that could be really big. Is that the official start 2024 of, of game theory for nation states? Yeah, yeah probably. I, one, one thing I was, I, I think I was, it was very interesting as well. Donald Trump said, he thinks or, or he, he know that China is still playing this game. And uh, I, I was wondering how he could know. So maybe he got some sources we don't have. I don't know. Uh, on the other side, when China bans Bitcoin mining uh, in 2021, um, the world realized after this that still 20% of the hash rate are in China and it's probably the state himself. So I don't know what's, what's the best way to accumulate Bitcoin without uh, being seen to accumulate Bitcoin. It's to mine Bitcoin, right? And probably it's the state himself. We can't prove this, but maybe he knows more. And I'm pretty sure if you if you look at the reserve of current, of, of company, uh, uh, no, uh, sorry. My, my, uh, I don't talk uh, in English so often, so <laughs> sorry for that. So um, when you when you look at governments and uh, at uh, countries, you see in the end they have all kinds of assets and and reserves um, in in form of of uh, goods or, or stuff in the end. So yeah, I think why they shouldn't have Bitcoin? For sure, they will have Bitcoin. And the first big nations 
which going this way will pump this price for sure. And all following nations will have it much more hard to accumulate um, Bitcoin because it's now after after one nation will go, like the US will say, yeah, we start now with the reserve, the price will pump and China can't accumulate Bitcoin in, in for, for the price they probably could get Bitcoin before. So yeah, I think um, this is a start, but on a soft way, because even if Donald Trump is elected, it's not sure right now that he really will do this. Um, but the idea is now there and uh, yeah, it will be discussed and not go away, I'm pretty sure. And it's also interesting, um, how big is it for you that RFK joined uh, Trump? Because I think RFK has, is, is further down the learning curve uh, in Bitcoin than, than Trump. He, he speaks better about Bitcoin. At least he knows what to speak about Bitcoin and not to use crypto in, in all, <laughs> every third sentence uh, as Trump did. Um, is it, uh, could, could that be also like a really positive sign for, for the Trump administration? Uh, it's also interesting um, that... Uh, Uh, that, that crypto for Harris, there's even like a small group that has Bitcoin for Harris. I had uh, Terence Young on my podcast. He, he's a big proponent of, of Kamala Harris and he's trying to get uh, votes and donations for Harris. So like it, not even in the Bitcoin community is everything for, for Trump just uh, um, pointing that out. But it seems like the, the big part is like, oh, if, if, if Trump comes in, this is like a Bitcoin administration. And with Harris, there's coming chaos in and it's not a Bitcoin administration. Um, do you also see that, and is is and how big is it that RFK is is in the in the administration as a Democrat actually? Yeah. So all things I said before could probably seem like uh, I'm a Trump simp, but I <laughs> I I'm don't. Uh, so uh, I don't trust politicians uh, at any time. So it's just see what they say and what they probably do. But um, in the end, yeah, we have to realize Trump is more on the Bitcoin side as Harris. Full stop. <laughs> so that's all. And uh, but I'm totally with you. Um, if you if you listen to Donald Trump, you see, yeah, he's on the beginning of his Bitcoin journey, right? It's uh, a lot of crypto, but he makes a difference between Bitcoin and crypto. That's good, right? And uh, in the end, this is one step further than the absolute beginner. Okay, but yeah, I'm with you. Um, RFK is uh, much deeper in in this, and he realized more what Bitcoin is and what Bitcoin probably, uh, which solution can Bitcoin bring. And um, I think it's good that he joins this party because uh, when Trump will um, discuss this topic with him, he probably learn more about this. So yeah, I think it's good um, for Bitcoin and for uh, for the um, US citizens because uh yeah a, a positive way for bitcoin is i think for your for your society the best thing that can happen and rfk is probably um so when when you see the the betting odds on the election you see rfk had one person or so one person is literally nothing so one person will say yeah he will never be elected as a president but these are the betting odds um, and this is not his supporters, but because even if you are a supporter of RFK, you wouldn't bet he will be the president. And if you see how much people really stand behind RFK, I think it's a very positive sign uh, that he is joining the, the Bitcoin party when you want to call this like this, uh, because a lot of people will see this and will realize, yeah, when RFK is... Um, giving that hard position for Bitcoin. And he joins a party which also give a hard position for Bitcoin. I think in the end, it's uh, probably a yeah, very hard push uh, for Bitcoin adoption, for the mass adoption, which would not be there if um, yeah, they would go different ways, probably. Mm, yeah, it's interesting. I, I wanted to get that in because I think uh, you're really big in, 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 in Germany and, and it's interesting to see how, how you see it uh, from an outside of US perspective because I have a lot of Americans on, on my podcast also and discussed it well. Um, one other thing that happened this year uh, is the halving, the, the biggest event in, in, in Bitcoin kind of uh, every four years. Um, and Another thing that happened before the halving that I think never happened before, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, that we hit the all them high bef right before the halving, uh, I think in January or February or something like that. 
uh, we hit the, uh, new, a new all-time high before the halving, um, <laughs> which brings some, some questions in my mind. Does this mean anything or is this just like the high from the ETFs and uh, which <laughs> this discussion, I think is, is every cycle a little bit coming up, the discussion of like, when will this cycle break? When will we not have this three, four year cycle uh, coming again and again? Uh, is there any chance that we have now just like a normal market that goes still up and down, but not in those four year predictable cycles. Uh, and do we have something like a, a super cycle or like just no cycle at all? Uh, and could that happen even at that one? Because now like with the ETFs and maybe even nation states coming in and way more uh, companies also coming into the game. What do you think about that? Yeah. Um, for the first, you asked me, uh, uh, what were what were the biggest um, events this year? And I think the halving is much bigger than the ETFs and um, the politician party thing because um, this is the reason why Bitcoin is is uh, is a scar, right? So, um, but I don't had this uh, this event on my mind because it's it's just the rule of Bitcoin and uh, it was nothing which. Uh, uh so unexpected happened right <laughs> so from from these events uh i think the other two are more interesting but uh, for sure the having event is much more important and um yeah i think uh it was interesting that we hit the all time high uh before uh the having or or short after half no 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 before right before i think before yeah i, I will yeah. look it up yeah, but it was nominal, not uh, inflation corrected. So if we see this in inflation corrected, um, even after 2020 and the whole uh, COVID part where so much new dollars were printed in, in form of debt, um, you see, yeah, it's inflation corrected, not hit the all-time high. So I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good sign, yeah, because people... People don't uh, invest inflation corrected. I think it's it's more like uh, they they pushed it to the new all time high. <laughs> they were hyped, but it was in fact no real all time high. And so I think um, yeah, we're still on the same run like the having events before. For me, the year two thousand twenty five is so the more interesting year. And I think um, a year where probably a hard adoption curve will follow. There are so much uh, things that. Will happen so um, the presidential election we will see as well um, a change in the monetary policy of the federal reserve so it's very clear um, the inflation rate is going down so they uh, will uh, decrease the um, uh, the uh, interest rate as well and um, this results always in more money and more investing money so uh, stocks and, and assets will go up so yeah this uh, is what I think will happen for 2025, but I'm not 100% sure because there are some unexpected or probably unexpected events uh, when you see the Ukraine um, war and so on. Yeah, maybe there's some, maybe there are some events which you can't count with now and uh, they happen. So, but if, if this will, uh still work on a level like now and there's uh, nothing no surprise uh, then 2025 will probably very hard and i don't think it will be in a uh, uh, super cycle would like bitcoin will never go down again this will not happen even in uh, the wall street when when they're joining bitcoin and will um, bring very high prices for Bitcoin, they also realize gains in US dollar. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So because these companies are not hardcore Bitcoin maximalists, they probably will be in the future, but they are not now. And uh, they will realize gains in US dollar because this is what hedge funds and others do for their customers. They, they try to get more dollar out of this and not to get more Bitcoin out of this. So this will probably the future, but uh, not in the short term, maybe in a very long term. And yeah, if you look at the Bitcoin curve and you, you, you ignore the volatility, then we are in a super cycle since Bitcoin is created, right? So yeah. 
That's yeah, it's interesting because like there's this list like uh, up, 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 down uh, cycle in, in, in Bitcoin. I'm like, uh, I hope we can maybe get to a point where just like every year is a little bit up. Like it doesn't have to be the same one, but uh, uh, maybe just wishful thinking of my side. <laughs> um, really cool. Um, uh, by the way, I just looked it up. We hit uh, before the halving the 71,000 US dollar mark and after it again. Uh, so we kind of hit it. Uh, uh, two times uh but yeah before and after like in in march and after april and may we also hit it again um now to the really interesting part that i'm always looking forward in the in the podcast when we talk about a uh, bitcoinized world uh when we now look out maybe even beyond our lives uh when we look out in our kids and grandkids lives and we we've just think like okay, okay we are at a kind of a bitcoin world bitcoin standard world uh where bitcoin is so normal as a store of value maybe even as a medium of exchange maybe even as a unit of account um how different is that world besides a different money is how how different can that be uh from your perspective for for the world on a society level on an individual level wherever you want to go with that question it's hard to answer because um, uh, when you become a Bitcoiner, in the end, you realize uh, you can decide what's good for you, but you can't decide what's good for the society or for other people. And this makes a prediction very hard. So if you try to do this on an economical way, like um, you say, yeah, probably the, the, the most efficient way would be some kind of anarchy or so. Yeah, probably this was the final result, and uh, we find ways um, to to find solution for for things the state is doing today in on a market way. But I think this is so far away that it's probably not our problem, and um, it's hard to say. Yeah, this will be the final result. We don't we don't really know um, from from a logical way. I would say yeah, that's the final result, and that's probably the the best state. And um, I think. But but I, I need to be clear at this point. I don't think anarchy is chaos. I think this is a kind of of all in new speech or how how would you call this um, where you have two different um, explanations for one thing. And anarchy in the end is more like uh, you have you have rules and everything in a society, but these rules are not made by the, by a state. Uh, so this what people think what anarchy is is more anomy so like uh it's a state where you have really no rules and so on and warlords uh are uh, the masters of the world and uh the people are just killing themselves but i think um the best way is a cooperative way because it's the most efficient way and um a way of large um product processes and process chains which yeah in 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 which you as a as one of this society, as, as one of the market participants, if, if someone will damage you, he will damage the whole process chain, right? And in the end, it's bad for everyone. So bad actors are not acting against uh, one part in, a, in this market. They always um, fighting against the whole market. So the whole market, the whole society is interested in, in a peaceful way and uh, in a cooperative way and try to find solutions versus bad actors. And I think this is probably the best state, but it's maybe an utopie. I, I, it is the right word in English as well, yeah. And I'm not really sure if, if we will reach this, but if we can reach this, then Bitcoin is, um, is the tool for this, for the society. But when you realize we live in a world today, in a fiat world, um, where the US, uh, USA are the largest, by, by far largest military power, I think three times larger than China and uh, Russia together. And uh, you realize this is all fiat funded. And in the end, um, to, to um, make this process efficient, you have to, um, yeah, I, I don't know the English word, like it's, it's a Rückbau in German. <laughs> uh, uh, so backwards, uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know. You, you, yeah. You, you need to, you, you need to do, uh, yeah, you need to be very efficient in the end. And it, this is probably a process which will take a lot of time. And um, yeah, it can so much happen in the process. But I think Bitcoin is like a Trojan, Trojan horse because uh, all politicians, all 
people which are today uh, which have today a lot of power and a lot of might will realize yeah i can stay on the loser side on the fiat side or i can join the the bitcoin economy side and um when i when i become a a very efficient and very cooperative uh, market participant it's uh, in the end the best case for me so i think probably we don't see that the world um when when it's uh, become a bitcoinized world uh will have a large war of power it's more like it the fiat world will decrease 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 and in the end we have a free world and that's the best case i think and this is what i also think probably happen is it fair to say that we have kind of like a, a fork that we are going through? The, the one way is where we have Bitcoin and capitalism and, and the world that you described right now. And the other world is CBDCs and communism and, and total, total control and monitoring of, of the citizens. Is, is that uh, in the end of the day, the, the decision that citizens and the world uh, has, has to, to take or can CBDCs and fiat uh, be uh, live together in hybrid uh, for a very long time. Yeah, they can, and I think there will be. But in the end, uh, it's still the winner takes it all. And since I don't think that uh, planned economy will work in any case, not even in in computer games, so it will work never, right? So uh, I think Bitcoin will win in the end. Yeah, but. Um, uh, when you let's talk about um, anarchy again, because um, there are so much, uh, yeah, what's the word, um, experiments, uh, anarchy experiments on the world, and they all failed. And you have to ask why. So why should Bitcoin uh, don't fail? Why should anarchy and other things fail, but not with Bitcoin? And uh, when you try to find out what happened, then it's always that socialism systems attack the anarchy systems and anarchy systems are so small that they can't defend. So when anarchy has to work or, or should work, then it has to be a global phenomenon. And uh, which thing should uh, bring us a global anarchy system? So there's nothing besides Bitcoin. And now Bitcoin is there. So I think, yeah, it's, it's not like there's a CBDC state and there's a Bitcoin state. I think there's socialism and cbdc states and bitcoin is in this like this trojan horse and will decrease this from inside out right and so in the end i think bitcoin is a peaceful solution for a free better world and this is what bitcoin makes so great because you don't have to uh you don't have to stand behind a political political participant or uh as, or politician or a company or so on it's more like bitcoin will bring this world uh, a sovereign tool um yeah which is good for for efficient people and bad for people which try to rob others or do things like this i have one question now that i since like I think a week or something like that, I keep asking my my guests because I don't have an, a good answer to that. I even asked yesterday Max Kaiser about that. Uh, um, his answer was first hundred and then sixty five. <laughs> as a spoiler for you, uh, and uh, the question is right now is. Bitcoin is, it depends on which numbers you're looking at, but Bitcoin is around 0.1% of the global wealth. Uh, when you go with Jesse Meyer's system uh, with the 900 trillion, uh, uh, and I think Sailor also uses that as a, as a base case uh, for, for as a base model for, for his uh, predictions. Um, the, the big question is, is always, when Bitcoin is successful and we are in a Bitcoin world, uh, depending, like the, the timing is really difficult for me, like the timing, uh, I think is, is almost impossible to guess. But whenever we hit that Bitcoin world, um, what do you think will be the, 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 the global net worth in Bitcoin? Uh, my sure. logical conclusion is always like, okay, if, if, if Bitcoin is money, money is half of every transaction. 50% is, is kind of a logical conclusion for me. Um, but does Bitcoin stop at 50%? How do you see like if Bitcoin is successful and we're living in a Bitcoin world, um, how much how much percent of the global wealth can Bitcoin subsume no matter what the timing is? It could be 50 years, it could be 500 or 5,000 years. Um, but what's the, what's the end goal of, of, of Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a <clears throat> I'm a big fan of the Pareto principle. So the Pareto principle says 
um, you do 20% of the work and get 80% result. And to get the last 20% result, you have to do 80% of the work. So why you why should do you? So do 20% of the work, get 80% of the result, and this is very efficient. And in the end, I think this could probably happen to the world. Um, starting in the Bitcoin economy, like um, my savings are 80% in Bitcoin, 20% I use for my my home, my my living costs, and um, probably things I try out to get more money in the end. Uh, so this is my risk capital, 20%. I think this is probably not that bad. And I think this probably will also happen in the mining sector. So when you decide to create a good, you today measure your costs in money like the dollar or euro. But in the end, you could probably also measure this in energy. Like you say, hey, how much energy do I need to create a car? And I don't don't mean only the energy cost of your of your company. It's also the cost of your of your workers. Like they need food and everything. So you can't measure this energy, right? This is a big problem. But Bitcoin mining is like a global arbitrage of energy and energy price. So in the final state, I think when on one point on the world energy is getting very cheap, the miner will will the miner companies or mining persons will bring their machines to this cheap area, will get the energy and will make Bitcoin out of this. So the energy price is rising at this moment and will find a level which is globally very similar to to all countries. And um, so, yeah, there are probably sometimes some some volatility, but I think it's in the end a very, very same price for energy globally. And this results in um, you can measure because of your costs, the energy usage do you need for creating a car or uh, bake a pizza? I don't know, right? And so you also have to decide what's the best thing I can do with my energy. Can I create a car? Can I create a pizza? <laughs> can I mine Bitcoin? And this will be will be an arbitrage between Bitcoin and, and all other creation. So in the mining process. And I think probably even this is in the end under the Pareto principle. So I think maybe 80% of all energy uses by humanity in the future, I don't know, in probably a thousand years, will be used for Bitcoin mining. And the rest, 20%, will be used for science, creating new stuff, bring more efficient in your business model, create cars, create food, I don't know. So I think, yeah... 80% of every saved money will be probably in Bitcoin and of all asset prices and everything. And even the the energy usage of the of the global human society or probably interstellar global society then will be used for Bitcoin mining. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your Bitbox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign, 
individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin. Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for those amazing coin vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. I love that answer a lot. Really, really cool. And uh, now I, th I think you also, you learned IT as, I I'm right, right? You learned yes. IT as, as a, yeah. I think it's a, a great question then. Um, when we look at like, okay, we have Bitcoin now and there was the block size worth with big blocks and stuff like that. Uh, and then there's always the uh, discussion, okay, how do we scale Bitcoin uh, from now, like maybe a few millions uh, that have it on uh, actually use it as, as like a day-to-day uh, thing or like maybe even like give uh, one transaction per month with from the exchange to their cold wallet like most people don't touch their bitcoin uh, a lot they just like leave it in the in the cold uh, wallet if, if they have something like that um, so how do we scale from this this current state of of bitcoin to a state where billions uh, every day can use it as a day-to-day -day, uh, medium of exchange so you you uh, you mean because of um, of the block size limit, or uh, you you think about second layer solutions, or Se second layers? Definitely second layers. Like I think <laughs> we, we are we kind of like it always pops up a little bit <laughs> in that discussions. But uh, I think you and I and most Bitcoiners agree we have to scale in in layer solutions and 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 not on on the main layer because yeah then it's not decentralized anymore with with higher higher block space. So like how how do we scale in in in, in Lightning, uh, Fediment, uh, the, so many other solutions out there? Um, how, how do we succeed in having every everyone that, that everyone is possible to transact on Bitcoin? I also see different models where we have like an Onion model where like a lot of layer two technologies are around Bitcoin, or are we stacking layer sevens, <laughs> layer eights on on top <laughs> of Bitcoin? How do you see that? Yeah, I think it's uh, it begins with uh, how do you um, how do you categorize the layers so uh, yeah probably a network which is not interacting with the bitcoin network but with lightning is probably a layer three model but what if this layer is also interacting with bitcoin what is it then <laughs> so i don't know it's very hard so but i'm with you uh, we can't uh, scale that much in the uh, in the bitcoin main layer or probably we shouldn't do because uh, if you change the rules for that, you will uh, cut out a lot of participants of the network. And this is very bad for Bitcoin. We saw this in the past and um, I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> we don't need bigger blocks for, for this world because Bitcoin is for me the clearing network, right? And uh, we can scale in other networks, but they are probably limited um, based on the technology they choose. For example, Lightning has other um, scalability problems or, or other trade-offs than Fediment, right? And in the end, I think it's um, th there are two things very important. The first thing is the first thing is people want to use Bitcoin as a money, but when because when they want to use Bitcoin as a money and the main layer is getting expensive, they're interested in finding solutions to scale because when you just say, ah, I'm pretty sure in the future we will, bit, we will use Bitcoin as a money, so we need now a solution for this. This will never f bring a, f a, a good second layer which, which knows or, or which is perfectly designed for the problems of the future because we don't know which problems will come up in this moment. So we will find technology when we have a problem and this technology we find will be a solution. That's always the case. Yeah? So without fiat money, we don't, we 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 hadn't become or we hadn't get Bitcoin because 
uh, fiat money was a problem, Bitcoin was a solution. And uh, when fiat money w were not that bad, it was probably a little bad, okay, we never uh, get Bitcoin. So there have to be a problem and uh, then we will find a solution. And there's not now a problem for using Bitcoin as money. So I think the main layer is cheap, yeah, in some phases it's now expensive, okay, uh, but in this moment you can use Lightning or so on. And um, in other phases like where we are now, even the main layer is very cheap. So there's no real actual problem. And when we get these problems, we will get solutions. And I can tell you now how these solutions will look like. But I think probably it will not the one second layer which solves all these problems, but it will be an in layer where we connect several second layers to one solution. So there's probably a solution which is using for for a, a payment, um, a very fast, cheap payment. It will use Lightning for a trusted payment. I don't know when you invest in a company or so on. Maybe Fediment. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's uh, several um, layers, and I think you will have a software in the end which decides for you. You as a user don't know what the software does. You just know I have my words and I know this is in self-custody. No one can steal from me. And this technology is using, I don't know, <laughs> layers to send uh, money. Like you today use your television. Before it was just a, a one-way ticket. Now your television is a high technical computer device and you can watch Netflix and so on. And 30 years ago, it was two sides of, of script typing to or, or development to send an email. So and today you can watch live stream videos over your television. So you never know as a user probably how this really works. You just know it works. And yeah, since Bitcoin is a technology based on open source protocols, I'm pretty sure this open source protocols will be also the solutions in second layer. So I don't think there's in the end a, a closed company protocol, which is better than everything else. There will be some, I'm pretty sure, but I don't think they will win the, ran, the race at the end. And this is probably a very long term battle, but in the end, open source will win because it's more efficient. More participants can develop this, can look into problems and it's much cheaper to use open source technology except of closed source technology because there are licenses and everything else. And you see this in technology always like, you know, the HDMI standard for your cables, for your monitor, and there's a display port standard and the display port standard was funded um, open source because the HDMI standard is, uh, is um, there are a bunch of companies, I think, Toshiba, Samsung, and so on, they created this and they have the license and every monitor, every television, which is sold with the HDMI standard has to pay yearly for this, for this uh, ports per monitor. <laughs> That's crazy, right? So, and so the, the industry decides, yeah, we, we built another standard and display port is faster. It's uh, just the better standard and it's, free. You just can use this because it's open source. So in the end, open source will win always, but there's probably a very long time frame where uh, closed uh, software is for a time frame better. So yeah, I think we will scale over some companies like custodians and we will scale over open source technologies. And these technologies are probably a stack of software, like um, the internet is a software stack uh, or, or a lot of technologies we use today are software stacks, right? Really cool. I have two interesting sure. um, questions for that. The, f the first, as you said, uh, we will know our, our keys, basically our phrases, our words, uh, and then use Bitcoin. Um, I'm more and more pessimistic about self-custody being mainstream, the more and more I talk about outside of our Bitcoin Twitter and Bitcoin YouTube podcasting uh, bubble, uh, where I, I have friends that I talk to since years uh, and even were in Celsius involved in stuff like that. And they still have everything on exchange. And I'm like, hey, 
<laughs> like go just buy a, a bitbox or whatever and, and put it on there i will show you I, I will guide you through the whole process uh yeah. there are like services there are advisors there's like the whole ecosystem is already kind of built do you do you think that self-custody will will at some point be mainstream or will be will be uh, will people rely on bitcoin banks and exchanges and and all those things long term and uh, self custody will be self custody will only be for a niche group that really wants to take their freedom and their sovereignty in their own hands there's a german speak um, which says children who are not allowed to do anything become adults uh, adults who cannot do anything so if you are not allowed to do mistakes you will never learn how to deal with mistakes or or with hard situations and the fiat system is based on trust me bro i will bring you a solution for your problem so you don't have to do so this is why we have states and everything so this is the reason why they say hey it's good that we print money so you don't have to buy a street or, or pay for the police. In the end, you, you pay for this. You, you just uh, give another person or another um, company or, or uh, another, another group the power to do this. But in the end, uh, this is a problem. So the view of our society today is, uh, I, I so often heard people uh, saying, yeah, I, I think Bitcoin is not good for humanity because humanity is too stupid. But I think they're stupid because they are in a system which holds them stupid because it's doing all the shit for you. And that's a problem. So when Bitcoin is the long-term solution for sovereignty and for doing, be, being empowered to do your stuff for yourself and doing mistakes and dealing with mistakes and finding solutions by yourself, I think you will learn to be, to be more sovereign and learn to self custody. So yeah, in the first moment, I think the today's system will bring a lot of custodian solutions. And this is okay because this is the development way. And if I play Murphy's law on all these custodians, in the end, there will no custodian hold my Bitcoin because there's a single point of failure. And Murphy's law in the end says, which can fail will fail. <laughs> so they will all fail. It's just a matter of time. And then you are probably poor because you lost everything. <laughs> and you can do this again and again and again, and then you will stay poor. Or you will realize, okay, I probably should self-custody. And so this is a process. It will may maybe take some time, <laughs> 50 years or so, but this will happen in the end. Yeah, in the first moment, as I said before, as the technology part as well, as the scaling part as well, it's probably is a very, um, very central solution and and uh, solution by, by um, yeah, a company or so. Yeah, and there's a, another interesting perspective of my view, uh, or which which I think about. It's when you have today your your fiat money and you try to buy goods or stuff on Amazon or other services you need a trust party for the transaction. So there's no way around. So if you want to buy something on Amazon, you can't say, hey, Amazon, I will send you a letter with some money in it and uh, then send me the good. This is not happening. So you need a trusted party like uh, uh, MasterCard or so on. And because you need the trusted party, you are yeah, the victim of the trusted party because if you can't trust them, but you have to trust them, you have a problem. And this is the same problem. The dollar results in a in a money made out of thin air because before it was backed by gold. And a trusted party uh, uses their, their might, they're corrupted and um, destroyed this construct. And even if there is a point where a construct can be corrupted by a trusted party, it will be corrupted. With fiat money, you have no choice. They can be corrupted today and you have still to use them. So what's your decision in the end? Yeah, nothing. You can't do anything. If you want to buy a good on Amazon, you have to use the trusted party. When Bitcoin is hard money and a network layer, which gives you the power if you want to do the transaction by yourself, you don't have to trust a custodian in the end. So maybe you have 10% of your money on the custodian side. And if we want to shut down you, you still can do your payment. So you don't have to trust them in the end. And this is very good because now 
these payment providers are just market participants. And if they don't do their job good, they will lose market share and they will go away. This is not the case today because we have a money depends on these market participants. So I'm not a, a enemy of, of, a, of a company which is very profession or, or very, um, what's, what's the English word? So when, when they are focused on doing one product really, really good, why you should decide to build your own car <laughs> or build your own house? You can do it. It's, it's good if you can do, but it's better if you know you can do and you can decide uh, to buy the product of a good good company. And by payments, I think it's in the end the same. And if a company is is using their power and the money the people are having uh, having stored at the custodian and, and you, you go away with the money or so on, not the whole money system is crashing. It's a part of the society. Yeah, it's bad for them. So never let all your money on, on a custodian, but you don't have to let all your money on the custodian part because in the end, you can just, if you want, do a transaction with your own full node or your own lightning full node or your own lightning channels. And this means not everyone needs a lightning channel for the sovereignty. It's the part of the network with, which will allow you this if you really have to. Yeah, and that's the reason why I think um, it's not that bad to use custodians uh, in, a, in a free market and they are just companies. I like that a lot. Uh, it's, a, it's a great comparison, also that, that, that one in the beginning. Um, the, the second one that I was wondering uh, about the question about uh, um, uh, social uh, about um, scaling, uh, where you talked about open source is always better than closed source. Um, there's now in Bitcoin the Nostra protocol getting more and more popularity. But if you really look at it, like most people still are uh, watching the videos on YouTube, most people are still um, tweeting on Twitter and not on Nostra. Um, it's a really hard network effect uh, that those platforms have that, that can be cracked. But do you think also like the same principle that you see in Bitcoin and the open source is winning against closed source that, that will win across all uh, departments of, of the world, if we can say it like that. So maybe next one is social media, especially with, with banning. I think simply Bitcoin uh, scared some some U uh, Bitcoin YouTubers, <laughs> me, me, me for at least. <laughs> uh, simply Bitcoin was like banned for like five days or something like that on, on, on YouTube. Do you think open sourcing social media is, is the next uh, way? Yeah, and uh, still the same process. Uh, there have to be a problem that people realize they need a solution. And if you are not banned by the media, but you know, yeah, probably they can ban me, uh, you will not leave this network with the highest um, uh, usability. So, because if you do, you cut yourself from from all other network participants. And so this is the reason why Nostra, when it was created, had so a so low user base. And the user base will increase when problems in the real world are getting bigger and bigger. And even here, you can you can do this Murphy's Law thing. So there's nothing which can stop Nostr. So it will stay. There are a lot of uh, things that can happen to X, or so uh, formerly Twitter or uh, Instagram or something else. So yeah, in the end, um, just play Murphy's Law and all this stuff and Nostr will win. Uh, yeah, there have to be a problem for the solution. And so I'm not that guy which tells the people, oh, you now have to do Nostr and you, you uh, let's create a new new network and, and this will be great in the end. <laughs> so why should the people do this now? Yeah, when you have a problem, you should do. But this is a process no one have to force. Uh, the market will do this um, for the for himself. So I don't know what's good for people. And if someone uh, says, oh, I'm, I'm, I feel much better on Nostr, yeah use Nostra, please, because uh, this is your solution. But if someone says, I have no problem on Twitter, yeah, then use Twitter. And if you have no problem on Instagram, then use Instagram. But I don't think you will be the, hmm, <laughs> the efficient market participant by using Instagram because there are information missing because Instagram is filtering and censoring. So yeah, you will be probably getting poor or of information over time if you use these censoring platforms and you probably do better on Nostr. 
But maybe you also do better, do more worse on Nostra in a very early time frame like now because a lot of information is not shared on Nostra right now because not all market, so not all people of the society are there. So yeah, this will be not a hard switch. This will be here as well. Uh, there's one network which can't be destroyed <laughs> and all others can be destroyed. But the interesting thing on Nostra is that X is a platform combining two things, even as Instagram and so on. So the one thing is the communication layer and the other thing is the app you use for this communication layer. Nostr is a different thing because Nostr is a protocol for the communication and the apps building on Nostr are Iris or Damus or Amethyst and so on. And they are just using the same language or speaking protocol. And so you can decide in your app which relay is the relay I want to get information from because information have to be filtered in, in a free uh, communication layer because you can spam, right? So you need some spam protection or spamming or, or filtering things which are letting through good information and uh, blocking noise. And in the end, you have probably companies which do this for you. And if a company is do this good, you have a very clear, very nice network. And I think Nostra is able to transform our social media platforms to companies which do this for you. Like Twitter is probably in the future be able to use the Nostra protocol instead of the own communication protocol on their own servers. And this will make Twitter feeds readable in Damus, which results in Brazil couldn't ban the Nostra protocol, right? So um, there are so many good ways for free speech um, through the Nostra protocol, even if you don't use these solutions today, which are there like demos and so on, because maybe mainstream media will switch to Nostra in the end. Not today, probably not in the next 10 years, but maybe in the next 20 years. I don't know. Uh, I think so too. And, and I think uh, just, the, just the thing that Nostra is there is forcing, because 100% Elon Musk is aware of Nostra and, and things like that. Uh, and only the existence of Nostra makes Twitter more competitive because Elon Musk is like, okay, if, if we banning people and shadow banning people, they will notice and they will flee the, the platform. And hey, X should be the freedom of speech platform uh, and, and not Nostra. So uh, even the existence of uh, Nostra, I feel like makes Twitter a better place, uh, which is a really cool uh, phenomenon. Yeah, and this is, a, this is a big part because you are totally right. And um, all, all the time when, when Nostra is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, this effect will be stronger and stronger and stronger. This is the same thing with Bitcoin. So people say, yeah, when Bitcoin is global money in 200 years, why should I buy Bitcoin today? Yeah, the reason is very simple. On the way to, to this Bitcoin standard, Bitcoin is the alternative for fiat money. So they can't print without a limit because people will, will run into Bitcoin when they do. So Bitcoin will make the fiat world more efficient. Even in the end, the fiat world can't win, but it will make the world more efficient and will repair uh, in small steps just because Bitcoin is an alternative. And when Bitcoin is getting bigger, it's the same result like with Nostra. I'm totally with you, yes. Really, really cool. Um, before we come to the end routine of the podcast, I have one more uh, question or segment. Um, it is, uh, I remember a few years ago or maybe even last year, I don't know when exactly it was, I saw some personal videos of you where you talked about how Bitcoin changed you uh, and how you changed your diet and, and, and all those things. Um, so the question for you is, how did Bitcoin and being uh, out in the open with YouTube and out in the open with, with Twitter uh, change you? Yeah, completely, I would say, because... Um... Yeah, not, 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 no, not completely, but in very um, important parts of myself, because when I was young, um, I saw things like 9-11 and everything else. And I was so afraid of, and I said, whoa, these parts of the world are so mighty and so evil. I don't know who this was, but I know I'm just a, such a small light. Uh, what could I change? Yeah, nothing. I, I can change nothing on this. And I feel very depressed and very, uh, 
yeah, I, I, I don't feel free in the end. And then I realized, yeah, this Fiat game is, so I n don't call it Fiat game at this time. I think it was 2008 or so. But um, I called it, um, yeah, in this game, you can, uh, you, can, you can learn the rules, like you play uh, uh, chess or something else. You learn, learn the gaming rules. And if you play this game, you can, do a, you can create a good state for yourself. So I made my career and I made a good career on a global player and I was in a, in a IT management and so on and I get good, mo good money and so on. And then I became very ill. So uh, I developed uh, several autoimmune diseases like um, in 2019, like uh, autoimmune uh, pancreatitis, hepatitis, um, Crohn's disease and uh, ankylosing spondylitis, like a lot of, a bunch of. So, and um, when I, when I, get the information that I'm that I have the all these diseases, I realized, okay, probably I'm dead in three months because my 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 liver was totally um how I entzündet, I don't know the English word, but it's yeah. Right. It was it, 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 it was not not good. <laughs> yeah, it was not good. So and I realized yeah probably you are dead in three months. And um this was the time I had my YouTube channel for one year. I I talked about Bitcoin and other stuff and I realized so what do you want to do if you have three times to live? Um you want to still stay in your old job and so on. I realized no I don't want to and even if I I get um bankrupt in the end because I have no more money or so on. I, I, I want to change something. I want to live more what I really want to do. So I decided to marry my girlfriend, Debbie. And today we are married for sure. And I decided to create a company um, based on my YouTube channel, Block Trainer, um, and the content, uh, the Bitcoin content. And in this time, I started to think a lot of my life. So I think COVID was a part Uh, social distancing and so on. And I had a lot of time for myself, even because of my heart diseases. And I had to fight for this. I had a very high medicine taking phase of a year or so on. And I was, I, I, I looked very terrible. It was a, a very hard time, but it was a time where I realized who I want to be and um, what Bitcoin as a hard money probably brings the society uh, or which parts are are getting worse through fiat money, even our food or what we do in our lifetime or how we spend money and so on. And I just realized at this moment, okay, try to live as there's a Bitcoin standard today. So today I, I do my own, um, my, my, my own noodles, for example, or so on, right? I do a lot of sports and um, I developed a state where I don't need medicine for all my diseases. So I'm still a, a ill man, but not that much. So I feel better than any time before in my life. And I'm pretty sure my, my, uh, my lifespan is more than three months now. And I, I realized that this was all given by myself. There's no state which coming to you and says, Hey, or, or no government, which says, Hey, I, I, will make you healthy or I will give you a marriage or I give you a home. So you are the person who can make your life better. And Bitcoin is your tool for this. And I realized how many things in life are getting worse through fiat money. And I'm the living proof for myself that all these signs we have based on fiat is just so corrupted or so misleading that they are not it's, it, it's not a science of truth today and there's a science of truth and my doctor my my so several hospitals were involved in my diseases and uh one from the upper doctors told me because they had no, no answer why i'm now so good <laughs> they, they can't explain this by by their methods and he said i don't know but the person which is healing themselves is in right. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my proof, right? <laughs> so uh, I don't need more. I, I just um, like to think, I just love to have time for myself. I, I like sometimes to meet other people, but not that often. I, I really enjoy time with myself and with my thoughts and everything uh, and, and, and killing all the noise outside of my 
head uh, from outside. Yeah? So all the the fear the system is uh, telling us, like there's war, there, our, our, our environment is getting destroyed and all this stuff. So I can't do anything on this and no one knows the future. So why should I fear the future? I don't fear the future, but I realized as well, there's no security. I, probably tomorrow I, I will have a car crash and I'm dead. So how could I know if this not happened? So when there's no security and no fear for the future, don't live in 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 a false security feeling and don't live in a fear feeling. Just live and, and solve your problems you have now. Um, try to plan for some months or probably a year, but realize this is a very fra fragile construct. Our life is a very fragile construct. And what Bitcoin is giving you is you don't give this fragile construct in the hand of a state or a government. You give this fragile construct in your own hands. And this is the best feeling you can reach. And when you, if you ask me before I get ill, before I get my diseases, hey, Roman, would you like to get very ill and get some diseases, I would say, oh, wow, please don't. So I, I, I want to be healthy. <laughs> who, who said yes? But today I think this was the best thing that happened co uh, to me in my whole life because this was the, the starting point for this journey where I realized all this stuff. And these diseases um, were the thing on, on which I, I realized to getting free for my own life. And so I realized there's nothing really bad and nothing really good in life. It's always both. And when things are getting worse, like fiat money, we create Bitcoin out of this. So is fiat money now bad or good? <laughs> nothing. Yeah, It's just the living process. And the thing is that Bitcoin is just fit perfect in the society's living process. And you can use this to bring solutions for your own problems. And problems are very good because... Back to my sentence I, I, uh, I spoke out before, children who are not allowed to do anything become adults who cannot do anything. So please give me problems, give me hard times, because I know I will rise in this. I will be a stronger person after this. And I learn how to solve these hard times. And Bitcoin is my tool for this. And this could happen to every human uh, living today or living in the future. And Bitcoin is this tool for absolute freedom for all of us. I love that so much. That is so beautiful. And by the way, for, for all the people that didn't see uh, Roman for the last four years, five years on, on, on his YouTube channel, um, it's, it's tremendous how you look and uh, be more healthy every year. Like you can really see your transformation. And uh, I love that you're documenting that also on, on YouTube. And I just encourage everyone that listens to that one, just look quickly on his channels, look, look at like uh, videos four years ago and look at videos now. It's, it's, a, it's a massive, uh, massive, massive uh, difference. And I love, I love your, uh, your journey a lot. Uh, really, really cool. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us. Um, Thank you so much uh, for these words, really. Perfect. Then uh, let's come to the end routine. Two questions to end routine. The first uh, uh, question is always the same question. Uh, what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about? Yeah, in the end, it's this what I talked about in the end. So, um, so in the last in the last part, um, the solution for your problems, uh, you, you will find the solution for your problems in yourself. No one will tell you what the solution for your problem is, and you can try. Bitcoin as a tool to, to be empowered, to create the solution for you. I love that a lot. And now the end routine, or the last question of the podcast uh, is always coming from the previous guest. The previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, your, your last guest, <laughs> I reveal it uh, because it was just yesterday, was Max Kaiser. And he asked you, which will be the next country to adopt, do adopt Bitcoin? No. Oh. Uh, in which way, like like a legal tender or like a reserve currency or? Let's say legal tender. He did not specific, but, yeah. uh, specify it, but I think legal tender is uh, interesting. So, um, okay, I need to spec specific, uh, specify this again because um, like Millet did this in Argentina. He said, yeah, um, you can now do contracts and all money you want. So this is similar to a legal tender for Bitcoin, but it's not real a legal a Bitcoin legal tender. So a real Bitcoin legal tender, right? So not, okay. 
Um, hmm. That's very hard. I could I couldn't tell you because it's it's hard to answer. But I'm pretty sure this will be a country with a lot of problems with probably a good um oh what's the word um uh, it's um yeah a relationship uh, a good relationship to El Salvador or Argentina I think yeah, I think so too it will be really interesting to to see that whole it, game field yeah, playing out. It, this these are two experiments and people are now looking at this and um people are uh, realize more and more uh yeah when someone is elected it's not in two weeks everything is better in two weeks so it's a development over years so yeah Salvador started the bitcoin strategy years ago three years uh to uh, end of the week three years ago <laughs> and uh, and um uh argentina's uh elected Millet uh, a few months ago so i think it probably will take one or two years more and then they start to to uh, copy the concepts of these countries and and getting the best out of all the ideas from Najib or Millet probably when when this will work good so we will see it's an experiment thank you so much roman for for being on my channel for taking the time also thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening to this uh, for joining us today as always i'll be back tomorrow with another episode bye bye thank you so much bye bye <laughs>